Okay, um, <clears throat> welcome back. Real quick, uh, we are going to go over this structure uh, video. I need to get to bed. Uh, I gotta work tonight. But, uh, first thing you see here is struct data buff. And this is in our injection uh, program. And you see that we are defining 768 bytes of byte. A byte array called data uh, that contains 768 bytes. That's just our general purpose, write what we want to it. And then we see an array of ints called ints, an array of floats called floats, and a, uh, an array of what I'm gonna say are string pointers, but they are uh, gonna be an integer string offset value. <clears throat> It'll make sense when we get there. <clears throat> so everything else is the same. We're you know, declaring things, but uh, we have our return buffer still. But instead of that uh, buffer for arguments, we declare our data buff args and we initialize it with zeros. I like to do that just because otherwise it's full of random data, whatever was in, me in memory where it claimed that space. We see going down the same old, same old, the hooking, uh, the injecting in the DLL, the posting a message to get the uh, address of the arg argument buffer, uh, waiting for it, printing it when we get it, uh, posting a message to give our return buffer, and then we get into some new stuff. Well, we're going to define a string pointer as string 1 and tell it to point at the first byte of our data. Uh, section and then we're going to copy into that chunk this string this is a string I want to output <clears throat> now you don't have to null terminate because this is going to but it's just a habit for me to do that um, best practice I guess you could say uh, but yes stir copy will uh, append a zero zero and just to prove it for this video I will take these out which is going to shrink those by one which is going to make this 38 uh, and this 38 now we'll get to that in a second now the better way to do this would be instead of this we would do stir len stir one plus one and that would keep it dynamic if we change the string we wouldn't have to count numbers so we're going to go ahead and do that anyways um, now what this is saying is we're making a pointer to the first byte in our data writing the string to it then we're making a pointer to the address of where we want to put our second string which is well right after that one and we're going to copy this string into that chunk. Now, here's where our little offsets come in. Uh, we want to tell it where those strings are and how many strings we're sending. So we see that we have 0 and 1 for two strings. First offset's at 0, second offset is at the uh, end of that one plus one byte. So now we're going to pause so that we can actually see the writing and the message being sent uh, to our DLL and how it all functions in the debugger. Uh, so next what it's going to do is write our structure to where they have where, where their structure is at and the size of it. If you add all of that up it uh, adds up to one kilobyte. Uh, 1024 bytes um, and then we post our same message well that seems pretty simple well, let's look at the DLL again we see our struct same exact struct they sh should be matching if we want them to be matching we make one and we could initialize it to zero but uh, well we don't really have to um, in Microsoft Visual Studio, it kind of has a, a way of doing it itself, it seems. Um, but we know that the first time we write to it, we're going to be writing a blank structure to it anyways. Um, 
so we're not too worried about that. Uh, right or buffs, so that's all the same. But if we get down into our message here, we see loop through number of strings and print them. So we're passing, again, I forgot to mention here, uh, post message with number of strings and I'll print out. So number of strings, two. And so here we are going to loop from zero to one because it's for less than. And for each one of those, we are going to output the string. Now this looks a bit ugly, and we could uh, break this down into a variable so it looks pretty, but I really don't care um, because I understand it, and I think you should too. Uh, what this is saying is grab the address of the first byte of our data, so it would be the same as zero, and convert it to an integer and then add the integer value value that is stored at our argsbuff.strings.i which is going to correlate with number of strings which we have written our offset to and then cast it once that's done cast it as a character pointer pretty simple all it's doing is taking the offset of the first byte and adding a, our string offset to it very easy now let's watch this happen uh, also I added this copy to binaries dot bat so it will copy blank and my DLL from their respective folders into here so I could stop clicking 8,000 times now we're not gonna run dummy and blank we're gonna launch two uh, Ollie windows and see if we can't get them to fit in here I had this laid out pretty good I thought um, they fit okay. We can shrink that one a little bit, shrink this one a little bit. Um, yeah, that should work. We're going to make our registers a little bit bigger. Uh, we don't really need to see what's going on over here. Most of it will be here and a little bit in the registers. launch our dummy over here and launch blank over here and then let's run them first off and we're going to see our blank here and our dummy here so let's go to that address in the, in uh, Ollie so we're just going to select all and grab that and the hex of our dummy um, the program that we are injecting to. We're going to go to expression. Look at that, it's already there. So right now this is current, currently our structure. There's nothing in it. As we can see, it was initialized to zero uh, for whatever reason. Now this is paused and for good reason. First thing we want to do is go to our DLL go to the Windows procedure which let's go ahead and analyze oh, we did that already oh it should have been just right here um, it's probably right in front of me but I'm not seeing it for some reason it did not grab those like it should have um, well Usually it's named. That's okay because we can find it. Actually, do I already have it breakpointed? Yes, I do. There we go. So, <clears throat> find a reference to select command, jump, and it's this one here apparently. Uh, but if we wanted to find it, um, it should have loaded the uh, debug information. Did I load the right one? Yeah, I did. Dummy. Okay, that's fine. Uh, if we wanted to find it, we could just search for um, this def window procedure. Uh, no, I'm I'm good. Windows, we're 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 fine. But anyways, back to what we were doing. We would look for this and we would 
find it pretty easy. So we're gonna break point on that 111 message where it lands when it's when it is that message. And over here we are going to scroll up, go to the C exit call just above it. We're gonna look down and see. Eventually we'll see our pause, which is right here, and breakpoint right after it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit a key. It's gonna stop here for us. And watching this memory over here, we're gonna step through with F8 until it writes. Now we look over here and we see nothing. Well, I'll just click it. And we see that it has written our strings. And we also see that uh, we have zeros here. And that's a bit concerning because uh, my offset might actually be wrong now. Um, but that's okay, we'll get to that in a second. And then it's gonna go ahead and call that message and over here we'll pause instantly. We're gonna follow that through and it jumps in and says move to EAX some variable which is zero, compare EAX with some variable stored and if it's greater, jump out. So that's us entering a for loop. Move to EAX that first variable which must be our number of strings, multiply it by four and add this offset here which is the base of where our string our, our integer array is our string offsets and add that offset to our uh, beginning offset of where data is then output that string by calling that function and we see this is the string I want to output it comes back around move to EAX our original variable increment it by one store it now move it back to EAX, although it's already there, compare it against our uh, number of strings, which is two we see here. Uh, if it's greater, jump out. Well, it's not, it's only one. Well, greater or equal, jump out. Move to EAX that variable again, although it's still there. Now move to ECX, that variable, times four, plus the offset of where our string's at, what's at that point, so we see 27, which is 39. Add the original offset to that, and we see that it is now at 5-4, and if we follow that and dump, we see it is the top of our next string. It's going to output it, as we see here, this is another string I want to output and then it's gonna go back around again and jump out because we're now at two, which is equal, and it's gonna go on its merry way. Over here, if we run it, it's just gonna end because, well, that's what it does. That's all we have written into it. So, what we have now is the ability to pass up to 768 bytes, which we can always expand later, of just whatever data we need at whatever time, and we can always cast it to whatever we want for whatever reason we need. Currently we're using it for strings and using the ints in strings to uh, calculate the offset. Um, you could store pointers to where they are at, but they're gonna be different <laughs> in the uh, memory space of the DLL, so that's not gonna work. And then we see we can also store uh, 20 ints and 20 floats. Um, if we need those. Uh, we can always change the structure however we want. And uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, video. Uh, next one we are going to add in the function call to the changing a variable from a, a pointer. Changing the variable that is being pointed to by a pointer to the LPRAM uh, and processing a um, return value. I also need to get a pop filter for this mic, but that can wait. I don't know, you know parent nylons, some of this, you know, that, yeah, easy to make, easy to buy. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Like, comment. Uh, hope you learned something. Hope you uh, got to it. Oh, and briefly, uh, there was a comment on the last video of not needing to do the home handle open process, write process memory and just uh, casting this and then writing to uh, the pointer but you have to remember that you're operating on two different memory spaces um, that in theory will work 
but it will write it to the memory space that we are currently in, which is our DLL, not the memory space of blank.exe, which is where we want it, because the whole goal is to find the address of this and send it to blank.exe so that it knows where to write its data. Um, but yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, I, I like when people uh, think uh, outside the box and they, they think, you know, um, they, they go ahead and they think uh, additions and, they, you know, it's good. It's, that's how you learn. Um, and yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, this video is getting a little long and I know you guys hate that, but whatever. Um, but yeah, after this, return values, um, stuff like that. And I think it's pretty much done. Uh, then we're going to move on to a bit more reverse engineering, some disassembly, stuff like that. Um, how to read code uh, in uh, the debugger or in IDA or both and go from there. I'll su submit a few like outdated, like abandonware programs or like... Um, uh, no longer uh, available uh, programs uh, that have a serial protection or something like that and we'll read into them see what they're doing and we'll reverse engineer them to work again what I don't want is like today's top fad program can you please crack blah 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 that's not gonna help us learn all that's gonna do is get people mad at us um, if we do get submissions like that and the code is worthy of a video I will put it up but I will blur the names and make sure that nobody can obviously know what it is uh, other than just sheer sight um, which hopefully that will satisfy people to not get too mad at us uh, otherwise well who knows but anyways thanks for watching uh, like comment do that thing you do where you like post it on other people's pages and they watch it and then they watch the series and uh, yeah anyways bye